that we greet you in the name of Jesus. And to the one that got me ready to come and this is the life. We greet all of you today in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How y'all doing? Amen. 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 Before we get started this morning, is there a hymn book on your seat? I promise I'm not going to keep you long. Amen. Amen. If, if God says so. Amen. Amen. Everybody got a hymn book? All right, all right. Let us pray. Eternal and everlasting Father. Here we are once again. In the midst of your sanctuary. Before all of these witnesses. And we come just to thank you and to praise you, and to honor you, and to glorify you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let it all say amen. 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 Everybody got a, a hymn book? I would like for you to sing just one, one course of that. Um, Mother Hale, if you don't mind, um, what a friend we have from Jesus. chairs and pot belly stove in this corner. Mm -hmm. One more time.
Micah chapter 6, verse 3. Micah chapter 6, verse 3. Amen. We certainly thank God for all of you this morning. That you allow us to gather one more time. And we're not gathered at the cemetery. That's enough to tell him thank you. In the name of Jesus. When you find a place to just say amen. Um, you got a hard time finding it. Meet me on Tuesday. <laughs> there yet? Read, in unison, read verse 3. Oh my people, what have I done unto thee? And wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me. Take it personal, God is talking to you. Amen? Amen. And uh, the question is being asked because we have left. We have deviated from God. Amen. Amen. So he's asking us personally, what have I done to you? Nothing but bless you. Uh, from even inside the womb. That's all I ever did was bless you. And now I'm not getting on your nerve. I'm requiring a little too much of you. Amen. And the very air you breathe, he gave it to you. Nobody here woke themselves this morning. Wasn't no long clock. And you didn't choose to get up. God choose to wake you up. I'm trying to make some sense here. Y'all all right? Matthew chapter 11. And I wish I had a um, cute topic to give you this morning. Um, Amen. But all I got is a word. No green no. In fact, black coffee. Because it's in the book. Amen. So in the word of God, don't need no propping up. We just need to catch it. Um, Matthew chapter 11. Is that what I said? Amen. Amen. Um, let's try it. Verse 28. Sister Polite, if you don't mind. Matthew. Come unto me, all ye that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you. Now, is that a promise? Did you see a dollar sign? A checkbook? You had to have a title? Come unto me, what? That a what? You need to let me hear that again. I, you know, I missed something. Not me. All of us miss something. How great is it that God gives you an invitation for all of your troubles, and we refuse? What a friend! Is that right? What we have, you just sang it. And you've been singing it all our lives and never caught the message. What a friend we have in Jesus. All talk to him. I mean, that's, that, that's, that's a gold mine that we don't want to tap because we are too busy with our lives. Watch this invitation. Come unto me. Every one of you in here this morning got a problem. In some shape, form, or fashion. And what you're dealing with is going to affect us. Hello, somebody. The day is over for, for that statement, I'm grown. You can be grown and just as dumb, just as stupid, just as evil as you can be. 
And so goes your lives. So go the lives of those around you. There's a word we use a lot, I love you, with no content in it. It's just a fashion. You, you understand what I'm I love you. Why? What is it about me to cause you to love me? And don't tell me about the love of God, because see, if you don't love God, you don't properly know how to love your brother. That's right. Or your wife or your children, if you don't know how to love God. Hello, somebody. Come unto me, all ye that are labor and heavy laden, no matter what it is. Jesus is giving you an invitation. What I like about this invitation, nobody can block your progress if you surrender. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You never heard me say that trouble won't come your way because you submit to Christ. In fact, if you got good sense, you know once you give your life to Christ, you better learn how to endure long suffering. Because every day ain't going to be Sunday. Come on with it. Every month, <laughs> come on somebody, every month ain't going to be the month of May. If you ain't never had no rain, keep living. None of us live in a glass bubble. You understand what I'm saying? But what an ultimate, ultimate place to be is to be in the presence and the love and the virtue of Jesus Christ. Hello, somebody. Watch that invitation. You need to do that invitation again because somebody needed this morning. Wine ain't going to do nothing for you. Can I help you? Nobody really cares about your trouble. <coughs> Hello? And, and that, that's not a friend like Jesus, because see, he laid down his life for his friends. When your stuff gets tight, your, your friends don't leave. Because uh, that's just superficial friendship. Amen? Y'all don't catch what I'm saying? Y'all acting slow, man. Friend? Girl, sometimes you love to leave you. Sometimes you watch it, hey, that's enough. Yeah, I love you, but I ain't in love with you no more. All that crazy stuff. You, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so the only friend you really got is Christ himself. Listen to me. What a friend. Step out of eternity. Never knew sin, never knew this world, but come down here to die for me and you. What a friend. You're singing all the time and ain't got the essence of it yet. All them many years, we were singing that song. And I thank God for Mama because Mama put that song in you. So when things get rough, you can look back and say, you know what, I got a friend. And so, so, so when you're down, you can't camp there. You got to keep looking up. And sometimes your rope of hope going to break. But reach up past the broke spot and keep climbing. Next verse says, like, all ye that are laden and heavy laden. Oh, listen to me. Can I tell you? You ain't going to get no relief out of no bottles. No pill bottle, no liquor bottle. You, you understand what I'm saying? And, and you know, uh, uh, the media um, uh, sets a course for us and we fall right in. Um, because of the pandemic, you're depressed. Depressed about what? All of us gonna live and all of us gonna die. What you depressed about? Y'all all right? What you depressed about? Ooh, come on, what got you in depression? When, 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 when you wake up in the morning and you can hear the birds saying, thank you, Jesus, for another day, and you go to bed, raise a hell, sad and in sorrow, and wake up in the same condition where you ain't got bird sense. Don't take it much more. Black coffee? Give me another verse. Take my yoke upon you. Oh, sister. Oh. Uh. 
If you got a pencil and you think you're going to miss something, jot it down. Because what I'm giving you this morning is in this book. What I like about the book, and y'all look at me for a minute. See, 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 the word of God don't stay with us. Because we really don't want it. But if you want the word to stay with you, when you read your Bible, read it three times. The first time, make sure it's in the book. The second time, get the wisdom of it. And the third time, write it on your heart. Because see, you might not have the physical book when you need to pull up a word. Come on, talk to me, people. I just said, the Lord said, I'll never leave you, never say it. He talking to his people. He ain't no jack in the box. You pull him up. When you get ready and put him back in the box. When you don't need it. Can we go? Come on, Sister Blake. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your Lord, I sure love you, but you know, life with you, it's just too much right now. I ain't, I ain't ready to give up all that yet. The yoke, what is the yoke? Keep my commandment. If you love me, keep my commandment. It's impossible to keep the commandments of God. Save through your fellow man. And there's just too many folk you don't like. Amen. In your own house. <coughs> Can I teach you today? How you gonna tell you love the Lord and you can't stand your sister? Born of the same mother. What you crazy? And this one gets me. I ain't got no good relationship with my mama. Can you hear a fool like that? Without your mama, you wouldn't be nothing. I don't care how high the ladder of success you climb, you came from a womb. Many of us came from uneducated womb, but you got degrees. How soon we forget? What a friend? Sometimes when I think about that, look, look, look at yourself. Look at yourself. We had this little game when I was a senior in high school bunch of fellas we used to always, you know, kid around and we would always try to figure out with a haircut and the clothes you got on in your shoes, how much, you know, you had. And uh, it was impossible to get over $18. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most of us got $1,800 hanging around your neck. But I want you to know it, 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 your folk ain't gonna put that in the gas. I'm gonna tell you right now. That they ain't going in the gas. No, 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 no. That wouldn't make, that wouldn't make uh, too much sense. And if you got that hundred thousand dollar policy, what good would it do to put fifty in the ground when your roof leaking? Let me go on from there. Huh? You blame even unto death and your roof leaking and you living in an apartment? You must have lost your mind. I didn't mean to go over that. Y'all see? Yes, I did. It's time for us to wake up and look up. You understand what I'm saying? Thinking ourselves to be intelligent and just as stupid as we can be. Y'all don't talk about me when you get home, because it's going to roll off me like a roll off a duck back. You understand what I'm saying? You didn't slide out here with your mask on to say hallelujah, praise God, and go home. You need something to take home if you got a home. Uh, you may have an enclosure that you're living in, but a house is not a home. <laughs> Hello, somebody. The scripture says every man can build a house, but God is the builder of all things. And say, the Lord built the house. We do what? Uh, can we go a little further? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my word is light. You got a counsel? Matthew 5. I just want, you to, I just want to tell you where it's at. 
And when you call it the Beatitudes, and when the Bible says, blessed are you, when men shall revive you, me and you catch an L, right? Bless me, you're in a good position for God to make you. You understand what I'm saying? Bless to you. When men shall say all manner of evil against you, I ain't got to measure up to nobody. Prove it, brother, for life. See these. Nowhere else in the universe has anybody got my fingerprint. No one got your fingerprint. And so instead of submitting to Christ, we're trying to measure up over here and measure up over there, even religiously. You understand what I'm saying? The nomination, I could care less. It's more important to me to be a child of God than to be a Baptist. I don't want to talk about y'all. Because we went down and some dry devils, come up some wet devils, and he met Christ before you went down. He met him when you went down. And he met him when you come up. Oh man, that's hard for you to say. Yeah, but watch your actions. Hello? Danger zone. Danger zone. A life without Christ is a danger zone. I was sharing with my wife. Called one day. Had some little kids up in the house and called to order a pizza. And the lady said, What's your address? And I told her, She's all no, we don't come over there. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. You understand what I'm saying? Don't put them workers in no danger zone. That's right. You, you follow what I'm saying? Don't put yourself in no danger zone. You need to stick with a friend that has not only got your back, he got your front. He maps out tomorrow before tomorrow comes. Y'all all right? Amen. Prove it, Reverend Polite. God said to Jeremiah, I knew you in the womb. In the womb is when I ordained you in Matthew Can Can we go? I wish this was a question and answer series because I hear some stuff in y'all uh, wrestle with. Oh, if you dare meet me Tuesday night, wrestle with. Let's go. No, 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 no. It's still in Matthew 11. I just, I just let you know where they were in the Beatitudes. It seems like blessed are all those things are like the people that are in trouble, but they're in a proper place to be blessed. Why? Because they're still with God. Hello? Can I, can I give you a natural example that, uh, that might help you spiritually? So, Deacon A says to Reverend Fishman, uh, me and Rev pull up on the scene, he says, Rev, uh, let me have $5. Rev said, I ain't got $5. He said, you ain't got $5? Uh, no, he with me. So if I got the five, he got five. Y'all slow today. Mm -hmm. And what business of his anyway if he got five dollars or not? You understand what I'm saying? You know, you know, all you got to do is keep living and let God start blessing you and things start filtering out around you. If I had a laundromat right across that street. In fair, you think I might rise too high. You ride all the way up. Amen. 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 To a larger man. Okay. Thinking that I might gain too much. And if I'm a child of God, the much that I gain can bless you. Read for me, sister. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It does not take a lot. People think that it's so difficult to have a life in Christ. Can I run you back to Micah? I think it's chapter 6, the same chapter, verse 7 or 8. Only three things God requires of us. 
You got it, Sister Black? Anybody learn Michael? No, you said when you asked Sister Black. Somebody find it from me. Well, I got it. Micah chapter 6, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Verse 8. Let me simplify your religion, your life in Christ. Verse 8 says, He has shewed thee, O man, what is good and what doeth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with God. Do justly. Do justly. And you know what? We, we got this quotation, we say, do unto others as they do unto you. I can care less how you do unto me. I got to do unto you what God requires of me. You understand what I'm saying? My soul is more important to me than some thing that you've done to me. And whatever you've done to me, if I can't there, I'm going to wear it all my life. But if I step over it, hello, I'm free. Amen. And I ain't even mad at you. Come on here today. Amen. In Jesus' name. Come on, sister. Let me go finish Okay, let finish 30 and Matthew. Now, let's go back to the hymn. Let's go back to the hymn. What a friend. In who? Jesus. Oh, in who? Jesus. Wait a minute. Huh? You got to be Jesus? How about my girl? My, my tight buddy. Huh? How about grandma? How about my husband? Hmm? Because if you live long enough, husband and wife forsake each other. But Jesus don't, he don't roll like that. Can you imagine on the cross? Here's one sinner said, look at you. You gotta save others, why don't you save yourself? Huh? Two things I learned right there. This ain't my aim. This is just a season and it's going to pass. But life begins when death arrives. Amen. Don't be slow this morning. Life begins when death arrives. Right. You're going to shut this off. You got one leg today, don't worry about it. <laughs> Stick with God. You, you got two legs waiting on you. Y'all all right? You got a limp, don't worry about it. You make it home to him. You will limp no more. Most of us can't get past the graveyard. And that's why you keep going down there. And ain't nobody down there going to talk to you. Look beyond the graveyard at an eternal life. You got a choice right now where you want to live. Right. Nobody came back. Can I run over to hell for a minute? And this boy said, Oh, listen, it's too late for me, but I got some brothers, they're worse than I am. Can you let that go back there and tell, tell, tell my brothers, don't come in? Amen. No, no, the Lord says, I already sent prophets. And if you don't believe them, how can they believe one that came back from the dead? Ain't nobody coming back out of the graveyard. You understand what I'm saying? And, and please stop going out there before your time. Because you might go out there to visit and stay. Help me, Father. Because you don't clean them up anyway. The rattlesnake might bite you out there. Amen. But you might stay. Amen. Stay out of that graveyard until it's your time to go down there. And then when you go down there, you know you ain't coming back this way. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Now listen, be honest with yourself. Every one of us in this church today have done some dirty, low down, stinking, and nasty stuff. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you. 
and he didn't cut you off. Giving us a chance to repent and be restored. You got to hear my word. Yeah. Read from it. What a friend we have in who? Jesus. Oh. Our sins and reason. You mean everything? I, I don't have to walk around with my head hanging down. I don't have to worry about somebody remembering what I used to do. Or what I did 20 years ago, I got a healing for you. Amen? You want my pass, I'll give it to you on a silver platter and ride it straight to hell because I'm done gone. Read for me. What a privilege it is to carry. Ooh. Everything you mean we don't even deserve it? We've done nothing to deserve it. It's a privilege. It's like having a driving license. It's a privilege to ride on the highway. You break the rules, you ain't got no license. That's a privilege. You understand what I'm saying? Lord, I feel good this morning. It's a privilege while you're up to buy life insurance. Hello, somebody. Y'all can get upset if you want. Amen. You can pay for the shows just as just easy as you can buy that suitcase of beer. Hello. And guess what? If you die and you ain't got none, you ain't got no troubles. Your family got troubles. And their pride gonna make them bury you. I don't know. I've been thinking. I be thinking. I be thinking. I be thinking, help me, Lord. I be thinking. I can't bury you with my roof leaking. Wrap them in a blanket. Read. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Wait a minute, Sister Blake. You mean I can have peace in Christ? Wait a minute, I didn't say I'm going to have trouble, but I can have peace in the midst of, the trouble. of my trouble. It's like, it's like going through a storm, but if you know anything about a storm, there's peace in the eye of the storm. It's the outer perimeters where the real danger is at, but in the eye of the storm, there is peace, and nothing can touch you in the eye of the storm. It's good to have a storm sometimes. Yeah. See, a storm can refine us. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. It, it's good sometimes when, when, when you're doing well and, and your bank account is all right, you know, and your bills paid up. It's good sometimes to go through a financial difficulty. But then you will remember. You will remember. And you will remember that he said, I feed the sparrows. They don't plant no garden. How much more important you are to me than the spouse? Read this plan. And this is the saying this thing all these many years. And he ain't caught Jack. What a friend. We have him, Jesus. That's, that, that's enough right there. It changed the course of somebody's life. Come on. You don't have to go along to get along. Amen. You don't date somebody you don't even like. You call it security. What a fool. I'm married for security. Wrong reason. If you're not married because it's the will of God. Let me go on from that. Read, read, sister. Amen. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. We suffer because we don't surrender. And it's a, it's a golden opportunity, a golden invitation. You understand what I'm saying? Listen, picture yourself fixing a dinner for the family and nobody show up. Can I hear? Because I can go to scripture. And the Bible says, the master made a great supper. And he bid them to come. Everybody that should have been there, everybody had an excuse. Jesus said, go back and beat the bushes. Look 
bringing the bushes, bringing the maim and the cripple and the lame. So when you fix that dinner for your family, they don't show up. Don't get upset. Give it to somebody who needs it. For you have done good in the eyesight of God. You understand what I'm saying? And those that you try to do good for, they're the ones that will suffer. Not you. Watch this. What's coming in? What's going on? I wish I could hit that on me. <laughs> you ain't got such enough to buy a ticket. God people ain't wishing people. God people are people of hope. Read. Have we trials and temptations? Every one of us. And look, listen at me now. Everything in life ain't thrust upon us. We go put our hands on some stuff that we don't need to put our hand on. You make a plan, you dip your nose in business that's in none of your concern. Hello. When you're in trouble, seem like you should seek somebody with wisdom, not another fool. Can I hear you the plan? If you have the trouble in your marriage, why are you talking to a single woman? She ain't got one. What kind of advice she will give you? Boy, some soup. Both of y'all in the street. She got a husband to come on to. You can stay all night. But she has enticed you to stay all night. Come on, sister. Is there trouble anywhere? Mm -hmm. We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. What an what a awesome, awesome. Anybody ever had to cry? <laughs> Anybody here ever had sleepless nights? Yes, sir. Hmm? Anybody here ever sat down and tried to analyze the problem? Yeah. And still can't do nothing with it? Because see, 99% of the time, the problem don't just involve you. It involves circumstances, situations, places, people, or things. So it ain't just about you. But yet, if you had when the Bible study, you would know that the word says, in all. In knowledge, if you don't make a decision and then pray to God, you pray to God that he would lead you right in the decision. Y'all all right? What is our favorite word? If I had fallen, who gave you the first mind? Whose job is to come right behind and take it away from me? Y'all follow what I'm saying? Read this play. I'm, I'm almost through. I'm almost through. Amen. Amen. Let me say this. Good to see y'all now. Amen. Good to see y'all. Read. No comment. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? <coughs> Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Now, can I? Is that the end? Is that the end? One more. One more. Again, I say this. <coughs> Jesus knows our every weakness. <coughs> if you got, oh, excuse me. If you got, <coughs> if you got a situation within yourself, people say this all the time. Uh, I said, Lord, take that alcohol taste from me, or take that drug from me, or take that. If it's yours, <coughs> you got to crucify your own flesh. Ain't nobody else can do that for you. Amen. That's you have to crucify that situation in your own flesh. You can pray all you want to pray. You understand what I'm saying? Crucify it within your own flesh. That nigga sitting on that shelf ain't bothering nobody. You make a rational decision to go get it. You understand what I'm saying? So 
crucify that spirit and you won't even end up at the liquor store. You understand what I'm saying? God can't do nothing with you that you won't allow him to do and he will not move against your will. Can I help y'all? That's why as parents, it's just your, it's your job to introduce. It's your job to teach and to train until the day you die. But you ain't got nothing to do with that child's decision. Amen. And you can't make no decision for them. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? None. Because it ain't going to stick. And let me tell you about yes ma'am and yes sir in your face. Blink or turn the corner. You say, is that my child? Here where we get fooled. I know my child ain't did that. You must have lost your mind. She must have lost your mind. Amen. So just train and teach. Can we go? You got to crucify some stuff within your own self. You understand what I'm saying? And y'all look at me for a minute. When, when you know the word of God and you got a life in Christ, stop lying to yourself and stop building an excuse for yourself. Can I help y'all this morning? And, and, and everybody in here may be wrestling with something. But can I take you to, 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 the, to the man that was living in the cemetery? And the Bible says he had five to 6,000 demons in it. But they couldn't control him 24-7 for when he saw Jesus, he cried out for him. So we, 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 we are bound because we want to be bound. Don't tell me that you can't be free. Because the devil cannot consume you 24-7. Or you got a point in that where you can reason. Hello? That's why you're here. Where one of my old drunks at? You say, Lord, if you get me off of this one here. Yeah. You got to worry about me no more. Lord, if you could just, you know, see my heart jumping, feeling bad. Soon as he sober up, get some hot grits. <laughs> Feel a little better. Here, I'm from the old school. The first thing they do is call, get what they call a straighten up. <laughs> and they've been up all over again. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Pastor, how you know that? April 15, 1968. Found out liquor wasn't for me. I was so drunk every time I look in the mirror, I threw up. For 14 days. The Bible says, those that God loves chastens them. And I got a good weapon. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, I didn't tell you that I wasn't without sin. I'm just saying, he proved to me right there. In 1968, they came for you, son. Because most of us act like Indians when we drink it. Can we go a little farther? Y'all ain't upset, is it? Ain't gonna make no difference no how. I'll finish up and lock up. Read. Are we read Let, wait a minute, Sister Polite. And this was before you all the days of your life. We come into church every Sunday and sing this thing, what a friend we have in Jesus, and it has no effect on us over all these many years. You don't even need to open your book. You don't even need to open your Bible. Can I give you some history on this? If you look in that hymn book, it should have the name Joseph Scriven as the writer of that hymn. Let me tell you where this hymn came from. He lived in Ireland. He was about to get married and the day before his wedding, his fiance drowned. He left Ireland and moved to Canada. His mother got sick. He wrote, what a friend we have in Jesus to encourage his sick mother. You think you got some problem? Let me tell you about this one. 
he met another young lady. And the day before they were supposed to get married, she died of tuberculosis. He dedicated his life to Christ, helping widows. He got sick and got kind of delirious and walked out the house and fell in a pond and he drowned. He said he wrote that for his mother, but he wrote it for me. I wasn't even born yet, but he wrote it. He must have knew I was coming. So when you're so quick to punk out and lay up all these excuses and justify your unfaithfulness, you need to read that, sing that hymn. Don't sing it. Read it. And see what this man went through and you think your struggles is so tough. But you're surviving anyhow. What a friend. I don't know about you, but I done told Jesus a lot of stuff I did not tell another man. And let me tell you something. That, there's some stuff about you, don't you tell nobody. They'll stand up on your neck. They'll blackmail you. They'll tell everything you tell them. I'm in the wrong house here this morning. And, and, and what's so awesome is, is I can take everything. I ain't got to leave out nothing. Hello, somebody. Even while there's life, I can go back in my childhood. And I can't change it, but Lord knows I can acknowledge it. Yeah, Lord, I did that. You follow me? Yeah, Lord, I did that. You understand what I'm saying? And, and the reason why I can go to him, because he can take my past and blood. Yes. That there won't even be no record of it. Y'all all right? Mm -hmm. Can I share this and I'm going to close? When I first got married, I was struggling. And, and, and most of us, we, we get married because our heart flutter. Ain't thought about no consequences, finances, or nothing. We just... Matter of fact, most of you need to do vow in because you ain't heard nothing the preacher say. You just want to get home legally. Oh, well, I'm just telling you the truth. You heard nothing that preacher said. You just want to get to the house. Okay. Anyhow. <laughs> so we had got some stuff from sales. You need to put that in your note. Went to sales to pay the bill. Couldn't find us in the computer. And I'm there arguing with the lady because... You know, I, I want to get this bill over with. And so, the first sister polite said, come on, boy, come on in. You, you can't see God doesn't bless you. Who do you know can take you out of the computer? You understand what I'm saying? Come on, people. All of our sins and griefs to bear. Like I said, if he takes care of the sparrow and the sparrow don't plant no garden. When you get up in the morning, if you can hear the birds singing. I like the rooster because the rooster is so happy that God woke him up. He said, I'm going to wake somebody else up. And the rooster ain't got no snooze button. Y'all understand what I'm saying? That's because he's joyous that God allowed him to see a brand new day. Come on, Sister Polite, let's finish. Are we weak and heavy laden, covered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise for safety? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms, he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find the solace there. What more do you need? What more could you ask for? What more? Everybody in here is living evidence that God has sustained you, and in some cases, it took a miracle to sustain you. You understand what I'm saying? You know, 
I just, I just, I just, my, my heart, and that's why I keep giving that scripture back in Micah chapter 6, verse 3. How have God wearied you? All he done was bless you. And he blesses you even when others around you trying to put their feet on you. You understand what I'm saying? Now, now watch this. If you're nosy and you're always asking people their business, what are you going to do with that information when you get it? You ain't nothing but bogged down with other people's problems. But if you seek information from God, it can give you direction. It could enlighten you. It could humble you. It could increase your faith. It could give you a better understanding. Seek more of God and less of man. If this ain't been your cup of tea. Don't drink none. But all I brought for you was the word and the hymn. Now I know y'all gonna have to go check. <coughs> But the guy that wrote that, 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 that hymn right there, he had a rough life. But he had a life in Christ. Because if he didn't, we wouldn't be singing that hymn today. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. In Jesus' name, amen.